fine. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Willie Morales. And on today's webinar, I'm happy to say we have Brett Swartz. And let me tell you a little bit about Brett. Brett is an entrepreneur, investor, podcaster, deferred sales trust expert, and Northern California multifamily broker. His leadership roles include serving as founder of Capital Gains Tax Solutions podcast, founder of Capital Gains Tax Solutions, and founder of Commercial Realty Apartment Advisors. And today's webinar will take place talking about three secrets to building a tax-deferred optimal timing wealth plan, escape the COVID-19 crash. So, Brett, how are you otherwise? Hey, well, I'm, I'm better than I deserve. And, uh, you know, just just working, working, working hard and helping people uh, defer some tax here in these uh, trying times of COVID-19. No, I, and uh, you know what it is too, Brett, you know, people like you that are helping, uh, you know, you're giving other people hope. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, I thought I lost you for a second. And uh, listen, I really appreciate you doing what you're doing to, you know, help all of us out, especially save on taxes um, and just spreading the word. So Brett, I toss it over to you. Thank you so much, William. And thanks everyone for, uh, for attending this webinar or, or checking out the replay. And I'm here in Northern California and I'm looking forward to presenting to you the three secrets to an optimal timing wealth plan, especially during this COVID-19 crash and maybe how you can take advantage of that. And so with that, we're going to dive right in to the presentation here. So, uh, this is, entitled also or kind of a subtitle how i helped dave to finally achieve relief in retirement when he sold his 7.6 million dollar multifamily building and save 1.1 million in tax without having to do a 1031 exchange in fact he sold and we actually saved his failed 1031 exchange that property behind there that you see is his building and instead of doing a 1031 he was able to um uh, move all the funds into our strategy which you're going to learn about here in just a minute so this is me. Uh, I'm the founder of Capital Gains Tax Solution Solutions, and I'm located here in Northern California. But our company is national. We help we help folks across all 50 states. And as a legal disclaimer, I'm not a CPA nor a tax attorney. Uh, I have learned from some of the best in the business, but I'm simply our role is a third party trustee in this transaction. Um, but uh, we don't give legal or tax or professional advice. Each transaction and individual circumstance varies widely, and you are strongly encouraged to seek um, 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 advice from your own tax and legal professionals. And of course, if you like what we have to offer, then you can, you can have your professional speak with um, the tax professionals um, who provide this service. So Dave was in your position just one year ago. He's sitting learning about the Deferred Sales Trust for the first time, and he's saying, you know what, um, I think uh, I might be interested, but I want to learn a little bit more about it. And so in particular, he wanted to uh, find a way to finally time the real estate market, right? He was used to just selling high and buying higher uh, 180 days later via the 1031 exchange. And he said, you know, I wanted to be able to essentially sell and sit on the sidelines and buy when I want it to in the future uh, with no pressure at all. And, uh, and so he actually closed on the deferred sales trust. This is what we offer. And, uh, he used it for the first time and he's very, very excited. He also wanted to also, you know, slow down a little bit too. He's a baby boomer and he's looking to retire from the toilets, the trash, the liability. And he wanted to trade in for time, travel, liquidity, diversification, and essentially just kind of more retirement. He's moving more into a wealth preservation rather than a wealth creation mode. And he plans to keep all of the funds invested in a conservative portfolio of liquid investments. These are securities. These are, it's hard money lending. And then he wants to, to shift and have the funds moved into commercial real estate when the prices make sense. And so that is his plan. And so who is this for? Well, this presentation is for anybody who owns a highly appreciated business, investment real estate, primary home, or other assets subject to capital gains tax. And that could be, we're doing a Bitcoin case right now. That could be artwork or collectibles. We've done cars. We've done, um, um, art, you know, we should, I said artwork. We're doing a horse deal actually out of Kentucky right now for, for these race horses. And so it's uh, essentially capital gains tax. If you have it, 
we have a solution for that. If that asset you're selling is worth at least a million dollars, net of all fees or net of all debt or fees or closing costs, and the asset has more than a $500,000 gain. If you have those two combinations, then um, this is, presentation is for you. If you don't, uh, the rest of this uh, won't be as valuable, um, but it could be for someone you know in the future. Okay, so what is a deferred sales trust? Well, deferred sales trust is just a manufactured installment sale. In fact, it's, uh, it's known as IRC 453 is the actual tax code, and it goes back to the 1920s. And uh, you may know it as a seller carryback. So for the listeners who are familiar with real estate, uh, you can carry paper. And if you carry paper, meaning you become the seller, you become the lender, um, or I'm sorry, you are the seller, but you become the lender. Um, in that scenario, you've deferred anything that you haven't received yet until a later date, okay? And so uh, we've, been, it's a, it's a, it, we've been doing it for 24 years now collectively with the Deferred Sales Trust attorneys and thousands of closes, but really understanding that it's a tax referral legal loophole that the IRS allows us to do, but with there are certain guidelines we need to follow. But more than that, it, we like to say, you know, it's a new way of doing things, okay? Although we've been doing it for a while, it's new to you versus the old way. And what's the old way? Well, the old way is like the old blockbuster. It's the old 1031 exchange. It's, it's something that's it's pretty restrictive. I don't know if you remember going to the, going to the blockbusters. You walk in and, you know, find a video and the video may or may not be there, right? Because um, it might be checked out or, or when you get it, you have the three days to return it and then you have to rewind it and you have to do the, the late fees. And there's just a lot of, you know, parts about blockbuster that we loved, but there's some parts of it that were challenging. And that's the same thing with the 1031 exchange. You have to, you know, buy uh, within 180 days of when you sold. You have to uh, replace, uh, you have to identify within 45 days. You have to do equal or greater value. It has to be like kind. Um, all of those things create kind of some things that are challenging for folks. And, and, Versus the new way, which is like the Netflix, where you can essentially, you know, on demand, you, you can look at it. You have options. It's never sold out. Um, you're not restricted. Uh, now, you do pay a fee, of course, for that. But there's just so much more flexibility and freedom when it comes to the new way, which is the deferred sales trust, which we're going to get into, where you can buy at optimal timing whenever you want. You don't have to take on equal or greater value. You don't have to go into debt. Uh, you can have liquidity, you can have diversification, and uh, we think you're going to love it. And this is why it's going to help you um, um, create and preserve more wealth. So my goal for this masterclass is twofold. One, um, my goal is to help hopefully convince you, persuade you, move you closer to this first, first statement. Uh, the only way for you to gain the most freedom from capital gains taxes through a deferred sales trust optimal timing wealth plan. And number two, the only way to, a, to an optimal timing wealth plan is through capital gains tax solutions. And I always ask for a commitment from all of our listeners or anyone who's, who's uh, considering this is as soon as you know that the deferred sales trust is going to solve your challenges and provide you with the most amount of freedom for your wealth plan, that you will either execute on that plan and or just take it to the next step. Just talk with us, right? Or just take it to your CPA or tax attorney, right? And, and you know, let's all get in a room and figure this thing out for you and your particular circumstance. But uh, that's the commitment I'd ask of you after you watch this thing here for the next 30 minutes or so, okay? So um, again, I'm Brett Swartz. I started at a company um, in my career as a brand new agent at a company called Marcus and Millichap. And it's fact the number one largest national commercial real estate brokerage firm specializing in strictly in real estate investment services and sales. I, uh, I've, I've closed uh, over uh, about $88 million in multifamily retail office land, industrial uh, deals. I've also been a part of my own investing with my friends, family, and clients in, a, in around $100 million with a senior housing, mixed use, industrial, retail, multifamily. And so I've also closed countless 1031 exchanges for clients. I'm a commercial real estate broker by trade and Delaware Statutory Trust, as well as Deferred Sales Trust. I have my series 22 and 63 licenses, and I speak all over educating folks on, on these strategies. I've also been featured on Williams' uh, podcast, as well as some of these other, uh, other folks um, across the uh, World Wide Web and on iTunes. You can, you can hear me. Uh, a lot of these individuals have all interviewed me. And uh, I've also had them on my, my podcast too. So um, one of them I, I really like a lot is the Sharkpreneur guys. And so Kevin Harrington, he's on Shark Tank with Mark Cuban. And they also have a podcast called Sharkpreneur Podcast. And that's where Seth Green is his partner. And I was on their show 
and uh, they um, were probably going to do some business here in the future as well. So, however, when I first started, uh, it wasn't always success. You know, I started out in the real estate business and uh, this was not me, okay? Uh, on the phones, I was trying to help people buy and sell investment real estate. This was 2006 days and it was tough. You know, I was newly married, just out of college, um, baby, baby girl at home. And I was trying to make it in a business where it's hundred percent commission, no benefits, no salary, basically sink or swim. And if you close a deal, you get a big check typically, usually, hopefully, but if you don't, you get zero. And it was tough because of growing up, I didn't always have, in fact, we, we were very humble beginnings, didn't have, you know, very middle-class, low-income family here in California. Although my parents were divorced when I was young, my dad had money, but my mom didn't have as much. She was more like a single mom. And I was living with her 90% of the time. And so I always wanted to provide for my family and not have any of that stress uh, by getting, you know, creating, preserving wealth through, through whatever means um, um, with real estate that I could find. Um, but it was tough because I wasn't making a lot and I wanted to support my, my wife and just stay home full time with our daughter. And so I did what every good entrepreneur does. And I wouldn't got a side job and I wouldn't, I wouldn't figured out a way to keep my dream alive. And just as I got some success going and, and things going, something else hit. It was the big 2008 crash. And this turned up, turned over my world financially as well as, um, just, um, uh, just all of the stress that was involved with this for my clients as well. A lot of their financial worlds got turned upside down. And so uh, it, was, it was really challenging to say the least, but it also brought me to where I'm at today to teach you what I'm about to teach you because I had to pivot, adapt, and adjust. And so uh, again, I was trying to close deals and the challenge was some of these deals were so low priced and my commissions were so low priced. This was a seven unit multifamily property. I just, it wasn't enough. I wasn't earning enough. So I, so I had to go get the, the side job. I worked at Cheesecake Factory. That was, our, that was my wife and I's favorite restaurant. Um, and so I got a server position. This is actually my manager right here with a tire on. And I worked at this, this location in Sacramento. It's in the Roseville, Roseville place. And so he, I walked into for the job and he said, you're overqualified. You have two degrees and a minor. You, you're a commercial real estate broker. Who's to say you don't close a deal in a couple months and you walk away. And I did all this training for nothing. And he goes, if I'm going to hire you, I need two years. And I said, I'll give you a commitment. No matter what, I will be here for two years and I will, uh, I will work no matter if I close other deals. And so he said, okay. So he hired me and I was a server there. And so by day I would make the phone calls at Marcus and Millichap. And by night I'd go over to Cheesecake Factory and try to, try to uh, uh, keep my family going here and keep the dream alive. And so, um, and along the way I learned about, about part of that adapting period. Our, my friends and family and clients were losing, losing everything or some of them lost everything or lost half of their wealth because of the 1031 exchange. And the challenge was they had overpaid for properties. They had taken on all this debt and they, they felt trapped and then 08 hit and the market fell apart and they, some of them lost everything because they had too much debt. And so we said, there's got to be a better way. How do we adjust? How do we pivot? How do we make it so they never have to feel trapped again? What, in other words, what could we have done differently had we known something to help our clients and ourselves out? And just, just at that time, my manager at Marcus and Millichop brought in a gentleman to speak on the Deferred Sales Trust. And I sat there saying, what the Deferred Sales Trust, what is this? How, why haven't we heard of it? And he told us basically these secrets that I'm going to lay out to you here and, and that we could have avoided all of that. And we could have put people in a better position and we could have saved them all of the blood, sweat, and tears they had to go through with the 08 crash. And so as I learned about this and I started to implement it into the strategy with, with my clients, I had a lot of success. And my business began to grow and I began to add value and it, and it kept me going in the business. And I was able to provide for my family. And fast forward, we have five kids now and uh, four daughters and one son. And, and my wife, Melanie, and I live here again in Northern California. And then I speak and educate folks on all of this. And so that being said, I learned the hard way to do it. Okay. And over 10 years, it took, took me to really get to this point. And how many of you want to learn the easy way right now? Hopefully, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take 10 years of information as best as I can and, and push it into this 30-minute time here with you. And so, if you've been struggling, this is probably why. It's not your fault. Your CPA doesn't know, okay? He didn't know, doesn't know, um, and that's okay. Uh, we're going we're gonna to teach them. We're going we're gonna to help them. We're going to educate them. We're going to bring them in. In fact, we have thousands of business professionals now across the U.S., including CPAs, tax attorneys, national law firms, Real estate brokers, we've done deals with title companies, 1031 companies, you name it. 
insurance professionals. And uh, they don't know because they haven't met us and been educated and they haven't gone through kind of the 10 years of, 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 of learning that I've, that I've had to kind of struggle through. So second thing is your commercial real estate broker and, or your realtor. Um, they don't know, but even more so they might know, but they may not want you to know about it. In other words, there's no incentive for you, for them per se, uh, to give you this strategy because sometimes it, oftentimes it can take away from their business from growing. Although it helped my business grow and it takes us a while to convince them. And once they see it, they actually end up joining us. But that being said, the 1031 exchange companies don't want you to know about this. Most commercial real estate brokers don't want you to know this because they want to keep you in what's called the 1031 rat race where you don't have freedom and you're stuck and you're trapped and you're having to always chase this new deal, new property, new debt. And we're going to go through that here in a second. So if you try to do a traditional 1031 exchange, you've no doubt felt pressured and trapped under the 180 days. We call this the sell high, buy higher with, the, with more debt 180 day later plan. And so if that's your plan, then stick to the 1031. But we think a better plan is the opposite to that and that's freedom. And that's freedom from capital gains tax. And um, the 1031 exchange does, just, just does not work anymore. We think it's the old way. And um, it doesn't work as well as it could is, is really what it comes down to. And, and by the way, 1031 is good if you can find a deal which makes sense, but it's not always good, right? And that's the point here. Use the tool that fits your lifestyle, your timing, and your wealth plan that's best for you. It's, you know, you have a hammer and you have a screwdriver and you have a Swiss army knife. And unfortunately, the 1031 exchange is like a hammer. And you're just running around hammering things, but the hammer doesn't work for everything. Sometimes you need that Swiss army knife or sometimes you need that screwdriver, right? And that's the point. Use the tool and the strategy that's going to help you best in each scenario. And as, and as things change, you're going to have to adapt too, okay? And so as a part of that, by the way, according to the American Bankers Association, there's about 17 to $20 trillion which will pass from one generation to the next in the next 20 years. And this is known as the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet. And this is by the baby boomers, okay? And they're faced with toilets, trash, liability, and 30 to 50% of their gain being wiped out by capital gains tax and depreciation recapture. And they're looking for a way out, they're looking for a solution, okay? That doesn't involve a 1031. And that's where we enter here, okay? So again, the 1031 exchange, this is what we've been forced to do for the past 10 years. We call this the hard way, the hard way. You hire a broker, five to six percent commission. That's expensive. You sell a property, another closing cost of a half percent. You hire attorneys, qualified intermediary. Um, you hire more attorneys to draft new LLCs. You have to then identify within 45 days and closer than 180 days. That creates pressure. You have to apply and obtain a new loan. You have to go buy the property. Hopefully, you didn't overpay for it. You have to take on more debt that you didn't want to. You're feeling more pressure. Your upfront cost could be hundreds of thousands of dollars per deal. The time to do this is six months to sell your property and then buy another property. So you're time constrained. And then post-close, you have new management, new toilets, new leases, new utilities, new laws. And in California, and I think even New York too, um, rent control and all these different challenges that are going on. And then you have to do evictions. It's just endless. It's just a really, really a lot. And there's got to be a better way. And there really is. So I'm going to walk you through into how to build an entire Optimal timing wealth plan in just 30 minutes. Are you ready? Here we go. So these are the three secrets to an optimal timing wealth plan, okay? And we call this a actually a transformational wealth plan because it's truly more than just a transaction. It's transformational for our clients and for their wealth plans, okay? So secret number one, selling and deferring hundreds of thousands of, to millions of dollars in capital gains tax, how to legally break free from capital gains tax and find freedom to buy and sell your business or property without ever worrying about a 1031 exchange ever again. And secret number two, optimal timing transformational wealth plan cloning. How to clone a proven wealth plan with capital, capital gains tax solutions in less than five hours and have more time, energy, and debt freedom. Secret number three, my number one wealth building hack, how to get your deferred sales trust to work in your favor and become an investment rather than an expense. So diving right into the first one, how to legally break free from capital gains tax and find freedom to buy and sell your business or property without ever worrying about a 1031 exchange ever again. Okay, so here, meet Joe. He wants to sell his business, primary home or investment real estate. He feels trapped by the capital gains tax, 30 to 
He's looking, he's going to 1031. By the way, the 1031 doesn't work for a business, doesn't work for a primary home. It only works for commercial real estate, right? So let's we'll just say he's selling an apartment complex and he goes to sell, but he gets hurt every time or a lot of the times because he hits his black eye because he's having to overpay for property and, or not be able to sell that, that asset because he can't defer the tax. He doesn't have a clear, good way to do it. So he feels frustrated by all of that, but he wants to retire. He wants to be out of debt and he wants to have a passive income stream. Or he doesn't want to retire. He just wants to sit on the sidelines for a while and go back in when the market makes sense. That's why I have the optimal timing part of this, okay? So um, uh, instead of doing a 1031 exchange and repeating all of the frustration over and over and over again, he can do a deferred sales trust. So step number one to your deferred sales trust optimal timing wealth plan is to determine your capital gains tax liability. We made it super easy for you. You can go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com and you can answer 12 questions on our calculator. And from there, you can get a side-by-side -side comparison to pay the tax versus not pay the tax. But more important than all of that is envisioning your ideal wealth plan. And what do we mean by that? Well, what we mean, what does it look like? Your time and your energy. What does it mean like for your legacy to give back to charity if you want to do that? What's it mean to look like to, to, to uh, not have to have toilets, trash, and liability? So I want you to map out and basically write out a business plan, if you will, for your ideal wealth plan and what that encompasses as a holistic approach, your personal reasons for selling and then your financial wealth reasons for selling and how we can mirror those together to make it an ideal wealth plan for you. Okay. So that's what you need to do. That's the homework you need to do. And as long as your liability is big enough, by the way, our minimum is a hundred thousand dollars of liability, um, at least. And typically we need about a million dollars of a sale on the sale. Um, our average deal is about 2.6 million and we're deferring somewhere around three to three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in liability. So just, just keep that in mind as we go along here. If the deal is too small, it won't work for us because our fees will eat up the savings. But step number two is you need to Take your ideal wealth plan and then you need to write a, uh, on a piece of paper, put a line down the middle and you need to compare and contrast the different strategies of the deferred sales trust versus the 1031, the deferred sales trust versus the charitable remainder trust, the deferred sales trust versus the Delaware statutory trust. By the way, the Delaware statutory trust is not a deferred sales trust. They're both DSTs, but they get confused a little bit here. So you can look at side by side for a comparison and then you're going to figure out which ones offer you what you're looking for, okay? For your ideal wealth plan. Are you looking for liquidity? Are you looking for diversification? Are you looking to be out of the toilet trash and liability? Are you looking for optimal timing? Are you looking to reset your brand, to get a brand new depreciation schedule? Uh, are you looking to save your failed 1031 exchange? Are you looking for a tax referral strategy that works more than just investment real estate, but works for a high-end primary home or it works for a, a business or collectibles or Bitcoin or anything else that is, is, has capital gains tax and, and 1031 doesn't work for? So write that all out and just start checking the boxes. And we think, again, like the Netflix versus the Blockbuster, you're going to see that the deferred sales trust is fitting all of the things you're looking for. And, uh, but that's up to you. You have to determine that you have to do the homework. Okay. So step number three, though, you start to like what you're seeing. You start to get excited about it. Now, what do you need to do? Well, you need to talk with somebody who's actually successfully used the deferred sales trust. So we, you know, you engage with us on a conditional basis. That conditional basis means there's nothing owed unless you close the deal. But then at that point, you start doing some more due diligence. Uh, before you close, you talk with people who have closed the deferred sales trust, our clients, and you find out, um, how they feel and, and anything else that you need to get comfortable with right there. Step number four is to sell and fund the deferred sales trust. You actually sell and you fund it and funds are held at TD Ameritrade, some of the largest banks in the world. In fact, this is the largest bank in the world now. And uh, the funds only move to your signature, but you fund the deferred sales trust. So again, back to Dave's story. Okay. He was sitting in your, in your shoes about a year ago and you know, he goes, look, it's a relief to be, to be rid of the apartment building. It was a very lucrative investment, but it came with a lot of headaches and took up a lot of my time and energy. And he didn't want to start over with a new 1031 property. So this, he's selling the $7.6 million property. He has $4.5 million of debt on there. And so if he buys something with a 1031, he has to replace all that debt. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to be out of debt. He wanted to retire from the toilets to trash the liability. He wanted more time and diversification and liquidity with his funds. He wants to be able to travel. And then, uh, again, go back into deals when it makes sense. He has sold, bought and sold hundreds of properties over, over 30 years. And he's done 1031 exchanges, countless 1031 exchanges. He's a commercial real estate expert. And so for the first time, he used a deferred sales trust for his, one of his largest deals he's ever done. And he is really happy about it. 
And by the way, you can see him on my podcast, Capital Gains Tax Specialist Podcast. We just, we just released that and he is on the show. Just search for his show. Um, Dave Levinson is his name. All right, so how does this thing all work, right? So before you go anywhere and before we do anything, we wanna make sure you get how this thing works. Okay, so we're gonna use Dave's deal as the sample. He sold it for 7.6 million, okay? And he, was, he had a liability of $1.1 million of debt, okay? And so that's the big number here. So if he does nothing, he's gonna pay that in tax. And so he goes, no, I like to do something, okay? Because I wanna keep this deferred. So uh, the first thing to understand about tax as it refers to a capital gains tax is what's called actual or constructive receipt. Meaning if the clients, if you as the seller actually receive the money, that 1.1 million is triggered. But if you, can, if you can have the money go somewhere else, such as a deferred sales trust, it is deferred into a later date. And the government actually kind of gives you essentially a zero interest loan on the money and says, as long as you invest it and you can live off the interest and pay ordinary income tax, it's deferred into a future, into a future date. And so instead of the cash going directly to the seller, let's say 7.6 million, and triggering that 1.1 million in debt, the seller's actually not gonna do that he's actually just going to sell the assets to the cat to, to the deferred sales trust. So the deferred sales trust is going to buy it for 7.6 and it's going to turn around and immediately sell it for 7.6. It's like a double escrow. Okay. Therefore the trust has zero gain. And this is really important. If you bought and sold for the same price, which the trust did here, there's no gain. If there's no gain, there's no tax that's triggered. So the trust is, is doing just fine. Now, why would they do that over there? Well, they do that over there because the trust is gonna turn around and pay, pay them or give them what's called a promissory note. And this note is gonna be for, for, for 7.6 million. Okay. Now they received a zero down payment, okay? So they did 100% seller carry back. They just carried paper, 100% carry back. And since they carried 100% of the financing, zero is triggered, therefore, they're in a tax deferral state. Now, this particular deal, just so you know, he paid off 4.5 million in debt, which meant the note instead of being 7.6 was about 3.1, okay? Now, however, the cash buyer had to put his 7.6 in. So the cash buyer goes to put 7.6 million into the trust. The trust pays off the bank with the 4.5 for the seller. So net net and here ends up being 3.1 million, okay? And the cash buyer takes title to the asset. Doesn't affect the buyer at all. Seller's happy, he got his note for 3.1. The trust is holding the 3.1. This is at TD Ameritrade, Bank of New York Mellon, Charles Schwab. And that's it, we're just we're waiting to invest it, which moves into the next part, where can you invest the funds? Well, this is really cool. You can put in stocks, bonds, mutual funds. It doesn't have to be like kind. You can diversify it. Some of the largest, largest companies in the world. But what I like best is investment real estate. I think that's what William likes best too. Is you could, you could, William could have, you know, a deal over here. Let's say it's a, a syndication. Okay. Let's just say it's a 200 unit apartment complex or something. Right. And you say, you know what, William, I'd like to invest in that. Great. Up to 80% of this 3.1 million can go to this LLC the next day. So let's just, let's just use 2 million to keep it, keep, it, keep it pretty simple here. So 2 million can go to this LLC of which you can invest into, this is probably another LLC by Williams, okay? And you're gonna, you're gonna put an interest in here. You're gonna take a chunk. Let's just say this was, I don't know, 20% of this deal, depending on how what he paid for it. So this essentially all tax deferred is investing into Williams deal. Now, it's a JV partnership. It's important to mention that. You're not borrowing from the trust. You're simply kind of like a self-directed IRA. It's being directed to an LLC, which is going into the trust. But what's cool about it is um, uh, it's going to be an 80-20 split. 80% to, we'll call them Joe and Jill over here. Okay. Joe and Jill. To, to Joe and Jill right here. And the trust is going to get a 20% ownership. And the trust is also going to get a preferred return. We typically do about an 8% preferred return. And, but remember, once it pays this 8% back, 
that it's going to turn around and pay Joe and Jill. Okay. So it's really, it's really benefiting them. Although Joe and Jill put up zero down payment for this, they get an 80% ownership. This is really important. The trust put up 100% of the 2 million in exchange for 20% ownership and an 8% preferred return. All commercially reasonable, all there. Joe and Jill are doing the sweat equity, although they might be more passive and they're just gonna just turn around and just have William you know, manage this 200 unit apartment complex over here receive their distributions. And then let's fast forward. Let's say this deal was bought for, for $15 million and then, and then it's sold for $20 million. Well, what happens? Well, let's just follow the trend. Let's follow the, uh, the, the deal specs here. So the 8% preferred returns got to be paid back first on this 2 million here. Then whatever, whatever the, uh, whatever the ownership structure is 80, 20, 80% to Joe and Jill and 20% back into the trust. So there's a lot of arrows there and a lot of moving parts. William, are there any questions there? Is that making sense? You fall on that? No, I am. And I, ha I do have a few questions. So I don't know if you want to answer or you want to wait until- No, uh, for, you, for you, this will be a good question because this is, this is one of the most intense parts of the, of the presentation. So yeah, go ahead and jump in questions for this one. Okay, well, uh, Carl M. was asking, if I'm in the progress of working with a 1031 intermediary, is it too late to switch to deferred sales trust? No, it's not. We, we, we save failed 1031 exchanges. We do need to get with them and talk with them and, 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 and add some language to the, to the, to the exchange agreement. But uh, most all 1031 exchange companies will, 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 um, um, will accommodate, you know, and, and uh, what we say to them is, is, hey, I'm going to pay a million in tax, but we need to add this language. And instead of sending the funds to me, just send it to my, my, my deferred sales trust. And they say, no problem, right? Um, but ideally, uh, you work with an accommodator that already knows us and that already um, has done transaction with, with us uh, because there is an educational process that we have to you know, make sure that they understand and, and, and they want to ask questions of us too because they want to make sure they protect as much as they can their clients. So, so yes, we can absolutely do that. And we've done that. Just, just contact us and let's work through that. Okay. I have another question uh, from Gerald B. He says, will this work with storage? Uh, warehouse and land because obviously he sees the commercial, the 200 units, but he wants to know if they, if it works for those three assets. Absolutely. So it works for storage. It works for land. It works for multifamily. Uh, it works for office buildings, anything that's subject to capital gains tax. It works for high-end primary homes. Um, we just did a deal in Cupertino, California. It's a $3.1 million sale. And she, she uh, had $400,000 in liability above and beyond her 121 exclusion. What's the 121 exclusion? Well, if you live there two of the last five years, you get a $200,000, 250 if you're single, 500 if you're married, tax-free on your gains. So if you bought a house for 500000 and you're married and you sell it for a million, guess what? You're tax-free. You're good to go. But for her, she had bought so low and appreciated $3.1 million because Apple you know, was down the street. And, and, and the prices went through the roof. And uh, so she saved $400,000. She could not do a 1031. So we were the only game in town there. So yes, we work for all of those, those types of deals. Okay. Uh, so anyway, let's get back to the, uh, to the webinar. I do have a few more questions. Um, you want to touch base after this? this yeah, we'll, just keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep going yeah. here. And we'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll just uh, put the, um, the, the questions kind of just, um, just, bring them in slowly here. So I'm going to clear all the sure. drawings and walk through this one more time so people get this, okay? All right. I'm going to walk through it quickly, but just, just want, to, want to make sure. You know, so there's assets to sell, and let's just say it's, it's a $5 million deal, okay? It's a land deal that's selling, okay? And the gain, the gain would have been $4 million. He bought it, and so like the liability would have been somewhere around about $1.5 million, okay? So instead of paying that $1.5 million, he wants to do a deferred sales trust. So what does he do? And so imagine this deal was all cash, all clear, okay? So he's going to sell the asset. And it's like in the same close of escrow. Okay. It's like simultaneous close 5 million to the trust. Who's going to immediately sell it to the cash buyer for 5 million. Okay. And the cash buyer can bring a loan. He can have a lender. He can have all cash. Just bring all 5 million to the table. He's going to put the 5 million into the trust. Okay. And the trust is going to give a zero down payment to Joe and Jill, and they're going to receive a note for $5 million, the full 5 million. 
And since they've received a zero down payment, zero tax is triggered today. They did a hundred percent seller carry back. And since the trust bought and sold for 5 million, it has a zero gain. So the smoke clears, the buyer takes the, the, the land, the deal over here, he's gone. And the funds are sitting at TD Ameritrade. Okay. And they can be invested wherever you want. So it's as simple as that. It's just an installment sale, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. And that's what we're here for, for, for you to do. Okay. So again, who this works for primary homeowner, business owner, car, we're doing car dealerships, tech entrepreneurs, dentists, veterinarians, optometrists, collectibles, artwork, Bitcoin, investment, real estate. It could be land. It could be, you could be a syndicator. You could, you could be an operator. It could be carry interest. Basically the question to ask is, is this subject to capital gains tax? If the answer is yes, then the next question is, do I have about a million in net proceeds? Okay, yes. And then the next question is, well, do I have at least $100,000 of liability or more? If the answer is yes, then, then this is what this works for you, okay? This is a couple recent deal, deal closes. I actually represented and sold this 270,000 per unit property um, for these two gentlemen. And this deal was actually interesting because because they had a 1031 lined up and they're all ready to go. But then um, one of the partners had to back out. He had to back out because he had a family emergency and left with the other one, you know, facing with no, no 1031 lined up and really uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax. And so instead of all of that crumbling and their relationship crumbling, he was able to use the deferred sales trust. The other one was able to do a 1031 exchange and it worked out for both parties and they're both, both happy. So that's, that's great. This is a transactional attorney for another deal. He actually puts, he merges and acquisitions together and he sold a business and he used the deferred sales trust for his own deal. Uh, this is the primary homeowner I was telling you about. Uh, she's actually an engineer at Google and she lives just three miles from Apple and Cupertino. This is her actual house that sold and we helped her to defer around $400,000 in tax. Okay, here's a few other recent closes and live deals. Some really big deals. And, uh, but we also, again, our average deal is 2.6 million. And then we're, we're deferring around $500,000 in liability. But here's some big ones. The biggest audit ever was a $125 million deal actually in San Diego, commercial real estate sale. So at the, at the, at the, um, at the heart of what we're about is more than just a transaction. We're more than just selling and, and deferring tax. And, you know, that's, that's good enough. But really looking for transformation. Right? What does that mean? Well, to be completely debt free. We're kind of like the Dave Ramsey get debt free plan for your business or real estate because you don't have to take on any more debt. You can sell your asset. You don't have to replace any more debt. You're also tax deferred, which is obviously important, 30 to 50% of your gain. You're also, your wealth is diversified. We think it's more than ever, it's more important to be diversified right now. And also have liquidity, have liquidity so just in case you need to access that cash. But more than that, no more toilets, no more trash, no more liability that you don't want to. You can certainly can still do that. We don't eliminate that, right? But we, we give you, you can give the option if you want to do that, but you don't have to. Um, but you also have time to enjoy your wealth, right? You've created and preserved this wealth for a long time. Now you've got a chance to, to enjoy it. And then you have the opportunity to grow your wealth at optimal timing. And this is single-handedly the reason I started my business. Remember back in the 08 crash, the reason those clients got hurt is because they practiced non-optimal timing buying. They bought at the peak. They overpaid via the 1031. They, they, they took on all this debt and they bought it non-optimal timing. Well, now you don't have to do that anymore. You can sell, sit on the sidelines and wait for the market to shift. Okay. In fact, we call this the Monday morning quarterback story. This is an actual deal that closed. Gentleman worth over $100 million, sold his asset in, uh, in Minnesota. And instead of doing a 1031, he did a deferred sales trust. And this is an 06. And he waited five years. And guess what happened between 06 and 011? Well, the market flipped upside down. And the property that he sold was foreclosed on. And guess what he did? Well, he bought that property back from the bank and the bank called him up and said, hey, do you want to buy your property back? And he said, well, maybe what's the price? He says, well, how about 40% less than what you sold it for? He goes, okay, 60 cents on the dollar. That sounds pretty good. So not only did he sell at the opportune time and get the best price, defer all the capital gains tax, but then five years later, he bought that same property back at 60 cents on the dollar all tax deferred without using a 1031 exchange. We call that transformational as a way to grow your wealth at optimal timing. So the most important question you should be asking right now, or one of them is, how do I know this thing is legal? And the second, how do I know my funds are protected, Brett? Like if I put this money in this trust with this company and you know, how do I know that it's, it's all going to be safe? Well, step one is track record, okay? If anyone ever brings you a brand new tax deferral strategy you've never heard of or your tax, your CPA hasn't heard of, you gotta ask them about their track record, such as 
how long have you guys been doing this? And the answer is 24 years. The next question is, well, how many of them have closed? Thousands of closes. Uh, that you said, well, how many of those thousands of closes have been audited by the IRS? Um, there's been about 15 audits. Okay, of all those audits, what were the outcomes? Well, they're all successful, successful no change audits. Not one single issue with any of them. Okay, hmm. well, will the tax attorney uh, back me up and indemnify me? Yep, they'll indemnify you. Will they provide audit defense? Yep, lifetime audit defense. Hmm. So they have a perfect track record. They, they face the IRS. Their actual clients have survived the IRS and the audits, and uh, they indemnify and provide indemnification. Yep. So if they don't do that for you, we would say be very cautious, and they don't have a long track record, be very cautious with who you allow to represent you and help you with, with your tax deferral. Your deal is too important to go with somebody who has a short track record, who won't indemnify, who won't provide audit defense, and who hasn't faced the IRS. If their answer is, oh, we haven't faced the IRS, they don't even look at us, that's not good. You want to, them to have been challenged by the IRS, and then you also want them to have had their actual clients looked at, and their actual deals that they closed. Because there's a lot of folks out there that are talking about different strategies, but it's not their actual clients that have actually done it. And so the tax attorneys, who do the structure, who provide the legal part of this, their actual clients are the ones that have been audited and those, those, those attorneys have survived those audits, okay. Next is what's called the protection of the funds. So how do you know the funds are protected? Well, we, we, we work with the multi-billion dollar bank and you have, we have what's called a DACA agreement with them, which stands for Direct Access Control Agreement, which basically means the funds only move with your signature. So you could sell, you could pay the tax and walk into this bank and say, hey, manage my funds and they would manage them, and guess what? Your funds would move without your signature. Or you could sell, defer the tax, move it with the deferred sales trust account, and guess what? The funds only move with your signature. So it's the same exact protections for you, okay? Uh, very, very important. You also have 24 seven access to view the funds online, and uh, there you go. So secret number two we're moving into is deferred sales trust optimal timing transformational wealth plan. So basically how to clone a proven wealth plan with capital gains tax solutions in less than five hours and become time, energy, and debt free. Okay. And this is the plan. Anytime, my friend, sell, fund, and invest. Anytime. This is the freedom part. Okay. When you have unlimited time and unlimited, basically, um, uh, asset classes to invest in, and you can do it whenever you want, that is transformational, okay? And that is going to change uh, how your risk, um, it's gonna change how, how you invest, it's also gonna decrease your risk. And, and that's essentially the plan we lay out. We basically, we as real estate professionals and, and owners ourselves, and probably yourself too, you know when it's a seller's market, you know when it's a buyer's market. You know, real estate's like a big old Titanic ship. It takes a while to get to turn, okay? But we know when it's turning, okay? And so the COVID crash has happened, and guess what? The real estate market is starting to shift. It hasn't quite happened yet with the real estate values, but it will. It's coming. And that's when you want to be able to take advantage of it. You want to sell high, get out of debt, get diversified, get liquid, get on the sideline, and wait for the deal, we call it, to hit you over the head. Okay? So that is the plan. It's pretty simple. And step one, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we just map out the plan. You do that with myself and with your trusted advisors. Okay? We have financial advisors that you can use. If you have your own financial advisor, let's bring them in. Let's, they have to join us and, and get connected with us to be able to offer this service to you. But we have thousands of professionals across the U.S. But essentially, you're going to map out a plan, and you're going to fill out a risk tolerance questionnaire, and that risk tolerance questionnaire is going to determine how and where the funds are invested. There's going to be a sample allocation that's presented to you, and you're going to approve or disapprove of that, and then the funds are going to go to TD Ameritrade, okay? There it is. Pretty simple. That's step one. Step number two, sell your asset, okay? You actually have to sell your asset. If you need help doing that, we have relationships with brokers, business brokers, M&A attorneys, commercial real estate brokers across the U.S., high-end luxury realtors that we can connect with you to help you get the best of the best, okay? And help you negotiate fees to get a little bit lower on that too because that's our world. But then you sell your assets. Step number three is you fund the trust. Step number four is you enjoy your wealth. Give more. So we say that less than five hours because truly it's about five hours. You're going to get on with the tax attorneys and us. You're going to get educated. We're going to put some paperwork together. You're going to, you know, go over and, and try to list your property. That might take a little bit more time, but we're going to do a lot of that and help, help to get that going for you as well. And then you're going to get a promissory note when you sell. And this promissory note is a piece of paper and you'll become a secured lender. 
and the assets that it's backed up against are the investments that it makes, okay? But most of our notes are 10-year notes, and they're about an 8% earning target. Can't guarantee that. We don't know how the market's going to do, but that's the earning target. And that is net of all recurring fees. Our fees are about 1.5%. We're going to go through that in a minute. Cash flow is usually about 1.5% per year. But at the end of 10 years, you can just renew again. You renew for another 10 years, you renew for another 10 years, you can pass it on to your kids and, and, or just cash out whenever you want and pay the tax, okay? But we call this um, transformational because it truly has taken all the toilets, trash, and liability. It's shifted all the risk away from you and you can basically have freedom to go in and out of different asset classes and, and anytime you want to do that, okay? Um, now, again, what we used to have to do we have to, have to you should either stay in our primary home, felt trapped in the primary home, can't sell it because we don't have a good exchange. We can't exchange and we don't want to rent it out for two years. And so we just sit there, not sell our business, okay? We don't want that. We want you to be able to sell your business. Overpay for a property via 1031 exchange if you're selling investment property. Have more time, um, um, have more energy or less time, less energy, more toilets, trash, tenants, employees, and liability. We don't want that. Uh, used to have to become the lender for the single buyer. So you could say, well, Brett, why don't I just do a regular seller carry back? Okay. But that means you're putting all your trust in that one person. And that person may or may not run your property or business into the ground. And you may have to foreclose and get back into where you were at before. Like, why would you put all, all of your eggs in one basket instead? And by the way, those notes are usually short in nature, meaning the seller or the, uh, the, uh, the buyer is going to pay you back pretty soon within three to five years. So it's just not, we just, we just think there's so much, a much better way to not doing that, which is having all of the diversification, all of the liquidity, all of the other um, options for the deferred sales trust. Okay, you used to have to stay in debt or pay the tax. Nobody likes that, all right? So it's a new way, it's a better way. It is the deferred sales trust. So I would say right now, who here thinks the deferred sale, sales trust is awesome, is amazing? We think so, um, and we hope you think so too. So that is essentially how to clone a proven wealth plan. We already have the plan in place, but we basically, you already kind of have it in your head, but we're going to help you pull that out and then we're going to help bring it together. And it's going to take at least, it's going to be about at least about five hours of our time, but we can do that and we can do that with, with you. We'll help you do that. Okay. All right. Secret number three, I call this the number one wealth building hack, how to get your deferred sales trust to work in your favor and become an investment and not an expense. Okay. First one is net income tax savings. William, are you ready to participate? I'm here. <laughs> all right, all right. So, so William, let's imagine you're making somewhere around $500,000 in your marriage, okay? And that would put you in this bracket here of approximately um, 35%, okay? But let's okay. just say of that 500,000, William, 200 is coming from a real estate deal or a business deal that you own right now. Like that's where the cash flow is coming from. And you're fully depreciated, so you have no depreciation to offset it. Well, guess what? You could sell that asset, move it into the trust, and then you can tell the trust to just compound all of the cash flow. Mm -hmm. So all of that $200,000, let's just say that it's earning, it can compound, which would mean what? Well, your 500,000 would drop down to 300,000, right? So you, you drop into a lower tax bracket, which is the 24% tax bracket. So, so William, do you see how we just saved you 11% and moved you into yes. a lower tax bracket? Yes, I see. That's amazing. Okay. And that's definitely so, tax savings. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So that's how the deferred sales trust is an investment rather than an expense. So let's look at this, this other sample, okay? Let's just say there was a couple making $440,000 and $200,000 was from the business, but that goes into the DST. And they let, they let that 200 just compound, meaning it's just building up in the DST. They're taking a zero payment from that until a later date that they want to receive it, kind of like a 401k does, okay? And now their tax bracket drops to 240. So guess what? They have a huge savings and that savings is about $70,000 in tax savings, right? So that's amazing. So just by making that one shift, you can do that. Now, fast forward. Five years from now, let's say you retire from your day job or your other business and your income goes to zero. Guess what? We turn on the deferred sales trust income. By the way, no minimum distributions, no timing. You can do it whenever you want. And now you start pulling off of that. Or let's even say you're even smarter and like you're in New York and you want to maybe move to a sunny place called Florida and you establish residency, residency in Florida. Well, guess what? If you do that and you start receiving income from the trust, so what state are you in? You're in that new state. That could be also more favorable to you. Follow me, William? 
Yeah, Brett, I wanted to ask you something. Now, you, where compared to a 403, a 403B or a 401K, and you know, you retire and you're maybe allowed three to 5% distribution, would a DST, that, can that fluctuate? In one year, I could take 10%, next year, I could take 5%. Will it, would, would that affect me in, in any way? I mean, obviously paying taxes, but where you're structured with a 403, 401, this seems that much better for us because you could just pretty much set your distributions the way you want. Am I you got correct it. in that? Yeah, you're absolutely correct with that. It's precisely what you can do. So there's no minimum distribution. There's no maximum distribution. There's no only this much per, per time. It's your money. How do you want to receive it? In one year, you might say zero. The next year, you might say 10%. The next year, you might say zero. The next year, you might say 20%. So uh, when you receive it, it's ordinary income for the interest that it's been earning. Right. That's ordinary income first. So interest, you're going to pay that first. And then if you dip into principal, it's going to be capital gains tax in the year, in the year that you receive it. So it's completely flexible, completely adjustable. We just have to schedule it. And by scheduling it, we just amend the note and schedule that. Mm -hmm. and, and away you go. So it's truly, truly uh, remarkable in that sense. No, I, I, I think, you know, more and more people will definitely find out about this. So I have a, a few more questions. Sure. Do you want to go back to presentation? Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that right now. It's, and then we'll keep going on the presentation. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you answered this one already, but uh, Stevie C wants to know, does the property has to be free and clear? And you said that it, as long, it can have some debt on it. Yeah, no, no problem. It doesn't, it can have debt or no debt. Okay. So it doesn't have to be free and clear. And that's a great question because he's probably thinking of a traditional installment sale, which that's typically what it means because, because you're becoming the lender. You have to have it basically free and clear because most banks don't let, allow a second around, over a first. Mm -hmm. And so by doing that, that's how most traditional installment sales are. But the beauty is we don't have to do that. We just ask that the buyer come with a full cash payment, whether through a lender or somebody, just come with the full amount. And the seller, you're not going to carry any paper for that buyer. You're just going to sell it to the trust and the trust is going to turn around and sell it to the buyer. And you're going to carry paper for the trust. But now the buyer's gone, the property's gone. And this is the beauty. Now the equity can be invested anywhere. Now, if you happen to have debt over here, that's okay. Just pay off that debt. And the net difference is what the promissory note is for. And so back to the $7.6 million deal, he retired $4.5 million of debt. And $3.1 million went into the trust. That's great, right? He's debt free. He's liquid. He's diversified. He's waiting on the sidelines. He's free from capital gains tax, but also free from the 1031 exchange of having to equal or greater value, which often means equal or greater debt. All right. Sounds good. Uh, DG initial says, what will trigger an audit? Great question. So let's talk about the audits here. Okay. So of the 15 audits, um, basically 12 of them were random audits, okay? They were not triggered by the deferred sales trust. Okay, that's something to, to recognize here, okay? Uh, the IRS knows this very well, okay? They, they, they looked at us, they've looked at it, and they've, they've, they've tried to turn over every rock and there's, there's, there's nothing to hide. It's just an installment sale. It's really what it is. But let's talk about those 12 audits. So those were 12 random audits. So the clients, high net worth individuals happened to get audited, not because of the DST. And during that audit, they said, oh, what's, this deferred sales trust thing and this promissory note thing. And, and they followed that trail. And then they went to the, you know, the law firm who, who set all this up and they went through it all. And they said, that's no, just an installment sale. And they provided all the paperwork and they, sh they showed all the business purpose and the third party unrelated trustee. And okay, no change, no issue. Signed off. No problem. That happened 12 times. Okay. It was happening. Um, and we were growing so much that they did what's called formal audits. So those are the other three. There's three formal audits, which are even more, not a particular case, just, Hey, you guys are growing so fast. We really want to see what's under the hood. No problem. And, and so they're looking at the books, at your, at your cash flow statements and uh, balance sheet, just a typical, you know, uh, financial statement, among other things. Y yeah, everything. I mean, I, the tax attorney just said, here, here, here's the structure. Here are clients you can talk with. Here are the accounts, you know, whatever you need. Here's the whole access to everything. Here it is. And they looked at it all and, not one single change. You continue as you are. And the, uh, uh, the one, happened, one happened in 08, one happened earlier, I think it was 2000s, the one in 08, and then one was uh, 2019 just recently. And uh, the 2019 person, IRS agent, the 2008 person had retired and they somehow didn't connect you know, the deferred sales trust. But essentially, we, they, we sent them um, all over this audit. We said, we just went through this just a few years ago. Here you go. Before the meeting even started, they reviewed everything. And by the time they got to the meeting, they said, Hey, 
you guys are good. They, you guys are, we want to make sure there's no trap doors. We want to make sure the money's not going overseas, which it's not. And we want to make sure that the consumers protect it, but you guys have something here that works and that's it. And that was it. It was closed out, no issues. So that's okay. important, right? Because you want to make sure again, that whoever you're going to choose to help you with this huge transaction has actually faced the IRS and has success. And we're batting a thousand with the IRS, not one single issue. So um, hopefully that answers the question. All right. Sounds good. So let's get back to the presentation. Sounds good. Sounds good. Great. I'm jumping right back in. So All we just right. talked about the tax bracket savings, which is awesome, right? So let's talk about the number two here, which has to do with the state tax. Okay. So if you're worth more than 22 million, it's actually 23.16 as of 2020, um, or in married, anything above and beyond that is going to be subject to a 40% um, death tax or a state tax. Okay. It's about 11.58 if you're single. So that's a big, big challenge. So let's walk through that. Let's imagine, um, you know, Joe and Jill are in our, in our sample were worth 52 million. So imagine all 52 millions inside their taxable estate. Well, that first 22 million or so is exempt, but that 30 million that's remaining, that's subject to 40% debt tax, okay? So 30 million times 40% equals a $12 million estate or debt tax. That's huge. So the intent is to move it outside the taxable estate before you pass. The challenge is most high net worth individuals before they meet us, they haven't been able to move it out fast enough. I mean, they've done some gifting, they maybe bought some life insurance policies, done some different things, but they can't get it all out fast enough. Okay. In fact, we're working on a deal right now for a client. They're worth 126 million. They've been able to gift 26 million out to their kids and heirs, but the other hundred million is still sitting there and they're selling a $20 million asset right now. And they're looking at uh, about, they have, by the way, a zero basis on that deal but we're going to save them on one transaction. We're going to move all of the funds outside their taxable estate as well. All, all capital gains tax deferred in the deferred sales trust. So on one day, one transaction, no gift, you know, it's no, um, uh, we're not running out of gifting. They're going to save $8 million for their estate. Okay. And this is staggering. No one else that we know of can do all of what we're saying in one single transaction. And so that is, that is huge. The, the DST, can have a huge, huge estate tax savings. So these are for the ultra, ultra high net worth individuals. Uh, please reach out to us in regards to this. Okay, step number three. Um, oh, by the way, that's how it helps to pay for itself, okay? Because if you didn't use us, the estate is facing 12 million in estate tax. If you use us, boom, you just saved 12 million. Amazing. Um, step number three, seamless partnership separation. So one of the other challenges with investment real estate, especially with syndications, has to do with the fact that uh, the whole entity must move. Meaning if William and me and, and Joe and Jill and a bunch of us owned a 200 unit apartment complex for the last 10 years and we're all in this LLC, well, guess what? If we try to do a 1031, the whole entity, 95% of the time, has to go with the next one. That means all the investors must go. But most of them have different plans or different issues or different you know, reasons where they want to get out. And so that's where most syndicators and operators, they just say, forget it. Was everyone pay their tax? We're not doing a 1031. And that's a challenge, right? And it's also a challenge for the partnerships, like, because one partner may want to sell and one people doesn't want to sell because they want to pay the tax. And so they're, they're arguing about selling or not selling. Well, guess what? The Deferred Sales Trust is a seamless partnership separation. We are not a 1031. The whole entity does not have to move. We can just partial out each puzzle piece and put them into their own Deferred Sales Trust. So let's just say there were 10 of us in William's deal and tomorrow we sell. Well, guess what? Five of us want to do a Deferred Sales Trust. Great. All five of us go into our individual deferred sales trust, not, never co-mingled with one another, all separate, and the other five can just pay their tax. Great. Or the entity could do a 1031 and three people could do a deferred sales trust. Okay. We could just carve out of there and be out of there. Or William could just do it for his carried interest. So the point is, it's a seamless partnership separation. Very, very flexible here. Okay. Step number four, invest in real estate, uh, invest real estate advantage. Okay. So remember no timing guidelines. We already talked about that. So hopefully you're going to purchase at a discount. That was the Monday morning quarterback story. Okay. But the second one, which is amazing is the new depreciation schedule. Okay. So I want you to think about this. If you do a 1031 exchange, the depreciation schedule actually travels. That's not good. So let's imagine you own an apartment complex for 27 and a half years and, and it's at a zero depreciation schedule, right? It's zero basis. Okay. That means you have no more depreciation. You fully depreciate it. Well, if you sell and do another deal and you exchange for the same price that you sold for, you're not going to have any more depreciation. The only way to get new is to buy bigger. Okay. So this is where the deferred sales trust is a huge advantage because if you bought that same property 
in the deferred sales trust, you got a brand new depreciation. So let's walk through that. It was a $15 million deal. It's fully depreciated. You sell it and you do a 1031. Well, that 15 and you buy another 15, well, you still have no depreciation because you bought and sold for the same price. But if you bought that same deal, you just took one extra step and bought it through the deferred sales trust. Guess what? A brand new $15 million depreciation schedule. Plus you add cost segregation to that. Guess what? You just accelerated that. And now your deferred sales trust has just paid for itself more than paid for itself. You following William? No, I'm here. You know, let me ask you something about that. I, I love the, the fourth, your, your fourth one where it says 1031 exchange alternative or rescue. Definitely talk more about that because I think this ties into what you've been talking about uh, since the beginning of, of the webinar. Uh, because I think more and more people need to know the DST advantage compared to the 1031 because we've been told that the 1031 has to be what we use if we want to just defer taxes on and on and on. But you have 45 days what to, um, to uh, find the asset and then 180 days to close. Or oh, did I get that? Did I get that right? You got it exactly right. So that's the first so, number one challenge with the 1031 is the, yeah. is the time pressure. Our parents taught us to sell high and buy low. They didn't teach right. us to sell high and buy higher 180 days later. And that's what the 1031 forces you to do because you have to identify within 45 days the properties that you might be purchasing and you have to close on, on one or two or three of those within 180 days. And that's not good, right? You want to sell high and you want to buy when the deal comes up. And that might be tomorrow, but more than likely it might take you 12 months to find that deal. And also you don't want the pressure like the seller. If they know you're in a 1031, guess what they're doing? They're, 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 they're excited to sell you the deal because they know they can essentially negotiate in a way that is not favorable to you. They don't have to give you any credits. They know you're in a tough position and it's not ideal to buy when you do a 1031 exchange. Okay. Um, also we can save a failed 1031 exchange. So you should go into every single deal. You should at least the bare minimum of this presentation. You should have it as a backup plan in case your 1031 fails. Okay. And it doesn't take up any of your positions. Okay. So the deferred sales trust is not a property. It's just a strategy. So it's not taking up one of your one, two or three. So it's not a detriment to your exchange. It's only an addition or value add. Also, you don't have to pay for anything unless you use it. So there's really no disadvantage to having as a backup plan or, or as an alternative um, or as a rescue is a better way to put it. So this, the other one would be equal or greater value, which means equal or greater debt. Again, you don't want to take on debt right now. You want to be out of debt. You want to be diversified. You want to, you want to take debt when it's a smart time to take on debt, which is probably five years ago when the market was really low, yeah. right? When it was a buyer's market. But over the last couple of years, it really hasn't been a buyer's market. It's been a seller's market, okay? And that's when you, you, know, you, you wanted to get out. So um, the other one was the depreciation schedule travels. We talked about that. That's not good. Um, and uh, those are really the, the, the main ones to, to consider there. So the last one I'll leave here is the debt free and invest into multiple commercial real estate syndications. So part of diversifying within your portfolio, let's say you had $10 million. When you sell one deal in a 1031, most people just sell one asset and they move it into a second asset in the same local, same city or local city in the same asset class. And let's just say they sold a hundred units and they're buying a 200 unit apartment complex, right? Okay. Well, you're not necessarily diversified. You're diversified with, with more units, but what if you did, instead of doing that, you moved it into a, you know, a fractional interest into a 200 unit deal and then a fractional interest into mobile home parks and a fractional interest into senior housing. In other words, you're going into multiple different syndications across different geographical locations across the U S and you're diversifying um, out of just one asset type in one location in one place. Also, you're getting out of the debt yourself. You're putting the debt on the sponsor and not on yourself, which also puts less risk for you. So that's important to notice. Does that make sense, William? No, definitely. I, I, I love the way, obviously, with this new, I won't say new strategy, but new strategy for some of us that never heard this before. And I, like I said, you were on my, on my podcast and you've been on other podcasts talking about this. One of the things I wanted to ask you is, depending on the structure of the LLC, now you said that you can have multiple partners and all that, but if one partner wants to say, you know what, I really don't want to do this. I want to cash, cash out. How does that affect our, our structure? 
Not at all. So the deferred sales trust, it's seamless. Okay. This is a seamless partnership separation. So okay. that's fine. They can take their cash and pay their tax. No problem. And, and then for yours, William, you could have your own deferred sales trust. Okay. And, and then, and then someone over here, Joe and Jill could have their own deferred sales trust separate from one another. And also too, let's say it was a million dollars that was going to you, William, but you said, look, I don't want to put all a million in there. I only want to put 800,000 into the deferred sales trust. I want some cash here. No problem. You're going to pay tax on that 200,000 that you receive. Um, but the other 800 can be deferred. So very flexible, very, uh, uh customizable for whatever you need to do. Um, it's, it's really nice when it comes to, to, to partnerships for sure. Yeah. I have a, a few more questions, yeah, right, sure. if you want to Yeah, well, let's take a little break for the questions, and then we'll, then we'll finish up the presentation. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I have a Jocelyn M. Can we bundle multiple commercial properties into one deferred sales trust? Absolutely. This is the beauty, okay? So uh, think of your deferred sales trust optimal timing wealth plan as the hub, okay? And as you sell each individual asset, they become individual notes, okay? All into one trust and you keep pulling all the money together. So you may have like a vacation home, a primary home, a, a multifamily property, a business, you know, Bitcoin, all of these different asset classes that are subject to capital gains tax. Well, you can slowly sell each one of them and just keep rolling it into this one trust, this one hub, and then you pull all that money together and then 80% of it can be used to go buy investment real estate if you wanted to, or multiple okay. investment real estate. So it's, it's really seamless. And one of this, actually a practical way this comes up is when people have multiple single family homes and they bought maybe 20 or 30 homes and it's very challenging to try to sell those all at once and do a 1031, right? The only way to really do that is to pull them together and sell it to an investor who wants a 30% haircut and then do a 11031. Well, you say, don't do that. Sell it to individual buyers who are primary homeowners and who can pay, you know, 30% more because they're getting FHA financing and sell slowly and just roll all of the proceeds one at a time into the trust. Oh, and just wow. keep rolling them in and okay. compile it all together. Does that make sense, William? Yeah, definitely. So if, if somebody does that, right, they have 30 individual homes. Uh, now the cash flow that goes back into the DST, are they allowed to take, let's say they want to cash up 10%? for their, you know, let's say walk around money and things like that. Is that allowable? Yeah, absolutely. They're going to pay tax on whatever they receive. Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's your money. How do you want to receive it? And so that is, it's, it's whatever you want and you want to adjust it along the way. That's fine. Just realize we're going to tell you, you're going to pay tax on this and that. And right. again, that's, that's fine. That's okay. Paying tax isn't bad. We just think, right. you know, if you don't need all the money right now, why would you take it and pay the tax on it? And that's the whole point. And by right. the way, why does the government even allow this? Well, they allow this because it actually spurs economic growth, right? So if Willie were to sell his $10 million property, pay $4 million in tax and put the rest of it under his pillow, that actually doesn't do anything for the economy. This is part of why COVID-19 is so, so, um, so tough right now. It's because no one's doing anything or spending money, right? And so when that happens, everything just stops. So the goal is to keep the money flowing. So if, 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 if William does a deferred sales trust and he invests that money into multifamily, invests it into stock market, that actually spurs economic growth, which what? Spurs job creation, which what? Spurs uh, revenue, which more, is actually more tax dollars. So that's why they allow these legal loopholes. Now they don't want you to spend it on your primary home. You can't do that. You right. also can't put it and spit it on, you know, fancy cars or something personal. If it's personal property, that's taxable. So when it goes to this LLC, it truly needs to be invested into something that's of investment purpose and business purpose that actually benefits the economy and benefits tax revenue. But um, so as long as we're following those rules, we're good to go. Okay. Uh, let's do one more question from Winda Z. If the debt of the property is over 50%, can I still use a DST? Yes. And let me also ask a better question. If my debt is over my basis, can I still use a DST? And that's the part we have to be careful of. So if William had a $10 million property and 5 million of debt and a zero basis, he has what's called a mortgage over basis. We can still solve that, but we just have to do a partial 1031 exchange. And so we would just say, reach out to us for that. But um, if, he, if his, if his um, basis was five and five, it's the same amount, then we're good. You can just sell and the, and the debt's paid off at closing and the remaining 5 million goes into the trust. So, so we would just say, go to capital gains tax solutions, you know, and, and, uh, doing the calculator make sure you put William's name, by the way, for any of these, any of these ones, if you're watching this, make sure you're, you're, you're mentioning William. Okay. And, uh, and William actually, I think he's going to have his own deferred sales trust calculator. So I think he's going to have his own site. So that being said, make Sounds sure you're good. mentioning him. So, uh, we can, we can all connect here, but that being said, uh, no problem on that. 
Okay, sounds good. Uh, let's get back to the presentation. Okay, great. Here we go. We'll keep going here. All right. And so we talked about these ones. So this is also Peter. Peter's a baby boomer. He's driving three or four days a week um, to Sacramento from Marin, California, which is out of San Francisco. And uh, he, he was tired of all of it, right? And he wanted to sell. And he had all this debt. And he had all this tax that he had to owe. And so he goes, I've never had so much time and energy. He goes, Brett, I had 18 problems. I didn't want 36 problems. I had 18 problems. I didn't want to do a 1031 for 36 problems. I was tired of all this. And so he got out of debt. He got tax deferred. He's on the sidelines and he's waiting and he sold before the crash. So he's really happy. So we talked about these three secrets. Okay. And they're really, really key here to a transformational wealth plan. And essentially, you know, how do we want to give you the these secrets right now, and hopefully you've, you've, you've grasped them. And we also have a, a capital gains tax solutions um, academy that you can also attend and get some more information on this. But essentially, how to legally break free from capital gains tax and find freedom to buy and sell your business or property without ever worrying about a 1031 ever again, and, and deferring hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in capital gains tax. Then you want to have an optimal timing transformational wealth plan. You just want to clone a plan, a proven wealth plan with us and with your trusted advisors. We can do that less than five hours and become a time and, and have have time, energy, and debt freedom, okay? And then, and then uh, number one, wealth building hack, how to get your deferred sales trust to work in your favor and become an investment rather than an expense. And so, do you think you could do this, okay? Um, uh, if you just modeled what works, okay? And we just basically laid it out for you. If you just set a call with your trusted CPA, William and myself, and an attorney and went through capital gains tax solutions with us to confirm this is legal and it works. If you just did that, if all you did was that, if you were just sit down with your financial advisor or one of our trusted advisors and mapped out where the funds would be invested and the risks accounted for, and then if you were to sit down um, with me and map out how the DST is actually an investment and not an expense, you know, breaking down the net income tax advantage and the new depreciation schedules, do you see how you could do this, that you actually could do this and you could have all the freedom that we're talking about here? So let me ask you a question. You probably feel like this, this little girl. She's not my daughter, but she, she's actually about the same age as one of my daughters, about four and a half. And you probably feel like uh, it's a fire hose and all this information just flying at you, right? Can I just make you an offer here, okay? And uh, just give me another few more, few more minutes. I'm gonna make you an offer here, exclusively for Williams listeners right now, okay? But I know you're feeling like this, but just give me a few more minutes, all right? So first of all, I wanna give you instant access to all the media and training, okay? At, at no charge. Okay. If you go through William at no charge, and that includes our podcast, that includes our videos, that includes our Academy. Uh, we also have an escape feeling trap guide. We have a brand new ebook that we just released, but basically I want to give this to you and encourage you to become educated right now before you're selling. Okay. Before you're selling, I literally had a call today and the gal said, I'm closing next week. I didn't know about it. I'm going to pay $160,000 in tax. I said, I'm so sorry. It's too late. And she's going to have to pay it because she didn't know about it. But that doesn't have to be you. You can get educated right now. Just reach out to William and say, and, and me too, and say, I want free access. I want to get educated, okay? Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast. You can search my name and all these folks will, who have interviewed me, okay? Um, but here's what you're going to get. I want to make you the offer, okay? Um, first of all, as a part of this offer, we offer what's called White Glove CPA Tax Attorney Access. Bring your trusted CPA. We get the education and blessing, okay? That's no cost to you, okay? We only charge if and when you do the deal, but that's the first thing. The second part of this is the lifetime light, uh, law firm audit identification and, and audit defense, okay? Um, it's an E&O show, e &O insurance policy of $20 million. They've never had to tap into it. You also have 24-7 access to view your account, real-time online updates. TD Ameritrade is our number one bank we use. You also have the DACA SunWest bank account. That's the billion dollar bank who holds the funds from, 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 from TD Ameritrade and uh, from escrow. And escrow has all the funds all the time and ensures you're protected. You also have, we also give you white glove seamless transaction coordination. So that means you're working with me and working with your realtor, your attorneys, everybody. We're all working together to make sure this thing all works and goes as seamless as possible. Uh, you also have what we call the White Glove Professional Banker Direct Access Customer Support. You can call him. He's a professional banker with SunWest Bank, and he will talk with you. Perfect. Uh, we also, uh, as Capital Gains Tax Solutions, one of our jobs is to prepare, prepare a tax return with CPAs. We work with a 55-year-old CPA firm as one of our, one of our trusted uh, advisors for that. Also, if you're going to form an LLC, you're going to want uh, formation. We have the attorneys ready to go for that. And also the onboarding with, with how to execute all of this, okay? Uh, access to some of the top wealth advisors in the U.S., okay? 
and that's uh, what we also want to give to you. We talked about the audit defense. We also have access to professionally value add commercial real estate syndicators like William. And in fact, you know, check out William's deals as a sponsor for deals. Okay. And then our professional um, network of attorneys who can provide living trust and estate planning services if you need that too. Okay. So again, who this works for is the primary homeowner, business owner. If you're selling a car dealership, a dentist, a veterinarian, an optometrist, collectibles, artwork, Bitcoin. Okay. Real estate it works for LLCs, S Corp, C Corp, partnerships, uh, limited partners, individuals. Um, it works for just about any highly appreciated asset for any high net worth individual of a million dollars net and at least a uh, hundred thousand dollars of liability or more. Okay. So you can see why the people who are paying us, you know, why people are paying us a hundred thousand dollars to set up a deferred sales trust for them. And these are all the folks that we kind of talked about their stories throughout. It's Maxine. That's Peter. That's Glenn. That's Dave. And that's Steve. Um, but we know, right. This sounds too good to be true. And don't worry. We, first of all, we have a reference list that you can start, you know, calling on once you're in, you're engaged with us, conditional, no cost engagement, but two, bring your trusted advisor on to speak with us. It's no cost on our side. We don't charge anything unless, unless you do the deal, but we'll, we will educate and, and walk them through it. Okay. So you can get started now for just 1.5% closing costs and 1.5% annual recurring fee. So you're going to get all of that. Now there is the, there is also a, um, a $1,200 CPA uh, tax return, a $1,500 Docker account fee. But remember, net of all recurring fees, at the end of the 10 years, we're going to hopefully net you that 8%, okay? And uh, here's a fee breakdown sample. So let's say you had a $10 million asset. You had 40% tax. That's state, federal, Obamacare, as well as depreciation recapture. That's going to be $6 million net versus a $10 million sale. You close out with some of the fees for us. That's about a $9.7 million net. So using the deferred sales trust, you have $3.7 million more working for you. By the way, again, 100% no cost unless you choose to use the deferred sales trust and your deal actually closes. So that's it. You can get started today. I would, instead of reaching just out to me, I want you, if you do, you need to mention William, please. Uh, but I want you to reach out to William and get connected on this deferred sales trust if we can help you out. With that, William, do you have any last questions before we let everyone go? Yep, I got one more, uh, and this is from JC, uh, Jenny. Before using a DST, does the asset or property need to go to an appraisal first before it goes into the trust? No, I think the heart of his question is he's asking, um, what are we selling for and who's determining the price? So right. um, the buyer is going to be paying the fair market value of what it is, whatever it is. And the, the seller is going to be ready to sell it. And the trust is only going to do the deal if the buyer is ready to do the deal. If the buyer doesn't do the deal, the trust doesn't do the deal. So it's like a simultaneous close. It's something, we call it a New York minute, right? It's just boom, boom, boom. It just closes, mm -hmm. you know. But if for some reason the buyer backs out or doesn't do it or the appraisal doesn't work out or whatever, you can't get the funding then we don't do the deal and you don't owe anything to us. We take off all that pressure. So we only transact if the buyer is going to do it. And then if the buyer does it, we immediately uh, sell it. Uh, you sell it to us. You assign the interest. Mm -hmm. we, assign, we, we, we sell it here and the funds go into the trust. So uh, hopefully that answers the question. All right. Sounds good. Well, that's all I have. Brett, I mean, you've been wonderful. Thank you so much for explaining everything in detail. I, I even got it. So you ex definitely explained it for a five-year-old like myself. <laughs> so Brett, if somebody wanted to contact you, say your website again and uh, email, whatever you want to add to the final closing. Absolutely. Thanks so much. So capitalgainstaxsolutions.com and you can schedule a free 15-minute uh, consultation call. We also have the online access uh, we'll, um, for Capital Gains Tax Solutions Academy. Go to iTunes, search Capital Gains Tax Solutions. Uh, you can go to YouTube, all of those things, all of those sources, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of them. Just search my name, Brett Swartz or Capital Gains Tax Solutions. And we look forward to being of service to you. Thank you so much. Well, Brett, again, thank you so much for taking a few minutes. Well, about an hour of your time to uh, talk to us. I think, I mean, you provided so much information and we had, I thought we had a lot of great questions. So, and thank you for answering each and every one. My pleasure, William. Thanks for having me on. It's been an honor to serve you and your audience. Well, everyone, that was Brett Swartz from CapitalGainsTaxSolutions.com. That's CapitalGainsTaxSolution.com. Brett, thank you for that informative webinar. Uh, it was a great, great presentation. And if anybody's interested in finding out more about Brett, please let them know that you saw the webinar with Peter Peer Real Estate Podcast. So thank you so much. Also, you can find me at peer to peer real estate.com. That's peer to number two, peer real estate.com. Check out our blog, our resource page, and our past shows. And before I go, guys, 
Just a couple of more things. Please go to iTunes. Look for us at Peer to Peer Real Estate Podcast. Please subscribe, leave a review. Tell us how we can make this show better. And do not give up on your dreams. Fight for it. Protect it. And keep the momentum going. I really believe good things will happen. Anyway, guys, on behalf of Brett Swartz from Capital Gains Tax Solution, I'm Willie Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody. And please stay safe. Bye.